the state of Florida with a front row seat to the rise in anti-Semitism. I want to warn you that some of the video we're about to show you is disturbing. Last weekend, several neo-Nazi groups gathered in the Orlando area on a bridge over the interstate and outside of Disney Springs, which is Disney World, shouting anti-Semitic and white supremacist messaging. That same day, just north of Orlando, Democratic State Representative Anna Eskamani captured video of one of these extremist groups marching and chanting, quote, we are everywhere. These rallies are just part of an ever-escalating surge of hate and anti-Semitism in Florida. The gunman in last month's racist shooting in Jacksonville had swastikas drawn on his assault-style rifle. And just this past week at the U.S. Open in New York, Play was interrupted by a fan singing a Nazi song, specifically the song of Hitler, during a match. A report by the Anti-Defamation League found that in 2022, anti-Semitic incidents in the United States rose 36 percent, an all-time high. American exceptionalism, indeed. Joining me now, Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League. Jonathan, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, although why we have you on is always so damn troubling to me because it doesn't look like it's getting any better, frankly. 36 percent. That number is not only astounding but disgusting. What kind of environment is allowing such hatred and anti-Semitism to thrive and flourish, especially in a state like Florida? Really an appalling situation, Katie. Over the last decade, we've seen the number of anti-Semitic incidents reach record highs in 2019, in 2021, and then last year in 2022. Literally, the total is more than 500% greater than it was just 10 years ago. And we're talking about rises in harassment, in vandalism, in violence. We know this at ADL because we're the oldest anti-hate group in the country, and we track this through our network of 25 offices every single year. We've been doing it for decades. So why are we at this point? Well, I think, number one, hate has become weaponized in the political sphere. You can't turn on your television or open your phone without hearing some politician use anti-Semitism or racism or other ugly terms to demean their opponent or to denigrate the other, the other supporters. I think, secondly, extremists feel emboldened. And we've seen that loudly and proudly in their words in Florida in the past few weeks. I mean, Katie, this isn't new in Florida. In the last, say, January 20 to August 22, we had more than 400 white supremacist propaganda incidents in Florida. Florida is the home to some horrible groups, like not only the ones who marched last week, the Goyim Defense League, Blood Tribe, the Order of the Black Sun, but you have Sunshine State Nationalists. You have the White Lives Matter Network. You have NatSoch Florida. They are all, you know, like ugly, hateful organizations and networks that are actually flourishing in Florida. And then, of course, let's not forget the fact that social media is a super spreader of anti-Semitism and extremism and hate of all kinds. You've got raging white supremacists. You've got hardened anti-Zionists. You've got armed militia members who are using social media to amplify and to expand their impact. Jonathan, let's speak frankly then about why Florida seems to be a beacon for these hate groups. The rallies that we just showed in the introduction to your interview becoming a near monthly occurrence in the state. In June, for example, a small group of people waving neo-Nazi flags alongside signs supporting Governor Ron DeSantis protesting outside of Disney World. The governor's office reportedly has not given any public response or mention of these events. So why, Jonathan, is someone like Ron DeSantis not publicly denouncing these rallies? It's really both bewildering and depressing. I mean, look, Ron DeSantis is an Ivy League-educated individual. He has, again, like the best education you could imagine. And anyone who knows their history knows that when you don't call out hate, it gets a foothold and it spreads. So it's hard to understand why he thinks it's in his interest. Now, I'll be honest, again, these hate groups are not unique to Florida. But what we need from politicians on the, on the like Ron DeSantis, others in the, you know, the race, of people on both from both parties, because neither side 
of the spectrum is exempt from tolerance. What we need, Katie, are clear, consistent call outs of hate, no matter when it happens. Even if you think these people may somehow support you, I think that's really warped. Because again, in the end, anti Semitism and hate will consume us all. We saw that in Jacksonville, Katie. I spent mm -hmm. Friday in Jacksonville at the funeral for one of the victims of the hate crime shooting the prior week. And let me tell you, it was a stark reminder of the pain and the suffering that stereotyping and bigotry can cause. Your organization is called the Anti-Defamation League. And perhaps to some people that don't know, it's not just an organization that's trying to combat just anti-Semitism. It's to combat all types of hate and extremism. But mm. currently, in a battle with the, quote, richest man in the world, Elon Musk, threatening to sue the ADL for up to $22 billion, bizarrely, in my legal opinion, blaming it, it being the ADL, for Twitter's 60 percent drop in advertising revenue. There are a number, Jonathan, of bad business decisions made since Elon Musk right. purchased Twitter about a year ago that could be to blame for that drop in profitability. But why do you think Musk is targeting your group specifically? Yeah, I'll leave it to your friends at CNBC to figure out how he's running or why he's running his business this way. What I'll simply say is the technique of blaming the Jews is as old as time itself. I mean, they describe anti-Semitism indeed as the oldest hatred because it's been around for so long. But make no mistake, ADL, you know, we and Jonathan Greenblatt, I didn't call him an anti-Semite. I didn't call his platform anti-Semitic. Not only are we not calling for businesses to boycott Twitter, ADL itself was spending money on Twitter until this whole, you know, debacle began. So the notion that we're trying to kill Twitter is in itself defamatory and just plain dumb because the facts don't support that, Katie. But I tell you what the facts do support. Twitter does have a problem with anti-Semites and racists and white supremacists on the platform. And if you don't have to take my word for it, just search on hashtag Ban the ADL. You can see it for yourself what they're permitting. Now, I don't know if you know this, but just yesterday, Linda Yaccarino, the new CEO, announced Twitter has a new policy on anti Semitism, which I think is laudable. And I'm excited to see how they enforce it. And when they get it right, we'll embrace them. And when they get it wrong, and they've gotten it wrong for a long time, we reserve the right to call Linda and Elon and the company out because we want them to do better. The world would be a better, safer, healthier place if Twitter were a better, healthier, safer place for its Jewish users, for all minority users, and the world itself. And to your point, it's one thing to have a plan. It's a whole other thing to execute and implement. Mm -hmm. And content moderation has been a huge problem since Elon Musk has taken over X. Jonathan Greenblatt from the Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, thanks for joining us this morning. I always appreciate seeing you. Good to see you, Katie. Thank you.